Hi, good morning. Well, good morning uh, where I am, late morning. <laughs> uh, my name's Kyra, and I'd love to hear how you pronounce your name and what time of day or night it is where you are. Uh, hello, I'm George uh, Jaramillo. I, um, I'm currently in Scotland, um, but I am originally from Miami um, and have found myself here for the last eight years. To you. Hello, uh, my name is Elena, Elena Antonia, uh, and I'm speaking uh, to you from Porto, Portugal, in a very sunny day um, from my home house. <laughs> and it's starting to get dark, uh, but it was a spring day today. Mm. So, uh, my understanding of the structure is that I'm going to offer some a seed or seeds to our dialogue, and then it will emerge from there. Um, I did bring a, a, a talking piece, so this is my talking piece. It has a little history. It was my father in love was a, a somatic therapist and artist and musician, and he just passed in January, and this was in, on his altar in the room where he did his work. So I feel like it's a very, for it's a good, good, good juju, <laughs> as we say. So that will be our talking piece to share. And um, the seeds, or I'm from the, the, the title are emergence and trust in the group within this larger kind of nested idea of how we navigate complexity. And the first seed I'd like to place in our in the soil of our dialogue is um, like my understanding of emergence in, in a succinct way, and also because I'm I love words and etymologies, and I tend to research the words and the history of a word. I'm going to share the an etymological perspective on emergence. And um, so emergence is what arises from the collaborative functioning of a system, of a complex system, but does not belong to any one part of the system. And the etymology of emergence is, um, it literally means the unforeseen occurrence. So it's, it's not only that it emerges, that it, it comes, it rises out um, but it has a quality of not being predictable, not be, it's being unforeseen. And it's from a Latin word, emergere, which is to, to rise up, bring forth, or bring to light. So that's one seed I'm planting. Uh, the other is about trust in the group. And the how deeply connected the capacity of a complex system is, especially a complex system that involves human beings. <laughs> Fallible, wonderful, um, extraordinary human beings. Um, so capacity is kind of the answer to the question, like, can we do what we what we want to do? Like, you know, capacity is that, um, what's our, it's a, in a way, I think about it like a range of motion. What's our range of motion? Um, and there's an equation. So we're going to go from etymology, so it's like the language part, to the math part now. <laughs> there's an equation that I learned from a mentor of mine who's also facilitating dialogues, uh, Jane Laran. She's the, the, the head. What, I'm forgetting. There's like the guardians. I'm forgetting the language, but she's like the head of our stack. Um, and she learned it from a Belgian named Julian Stahl. And I wrote it out, um, but it, I'm going to speak it and then I'll show it to you in a visual form. And it's the capacity of a system is equal to the sum of the relationships in the system to the power of trust. So it kind of looks like this. I don't know if you can see that I have a funny window. 
There we go. So the capacity, as I mentioned, is kind of like the, the range of motion. Like what, what's, what can we do? Can we do what we want to do? And the sum of relationships is addition. So it's me plus you plus George plus Elena plus, you know, Reno. Um, the sum is an, kind of an addition. But the power of trust is exponential. So the leverage of the trust in the system is actually like the most critical factor because as soon as you lose trust, then the, the, the capacity of the system really collapses. Um, and you can see this both on a, like a, what we think of as like a business or our kind of work world colleague and also in our very personal you know, family or intimate relating as well. So I, I, that's the second seed. And it came with a question when I was meditating on it this morning of how do we enhance and build trust if that's our critical piece in a way, our, our, the, 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 the element in the equation that has the most leverage. How, what does it mean? How does it look? What do we do or not do to enhance that, the, the trust in the system? So those are the seeds I'm offering, and I um, I have an opening sound for us. That was part of it, and I uh, the sound in a way it it, it um, I have this beautiful big old singing bowl, and I think of music is has that complexity as well because especially when there's like when it's vibrating the sounds interact with one another and create overtones and undertones that aren't any responsible, like no one sound is responsible for creating that overtone or undertone, but they emerge. So I'll play this for a moment and then we'll enter in. Thank you, Kyra, for this moment. It was, it felt so good. <laughs> um, and uh, I was listening to you and uh, my week came to my head because uh, this week I think I felt uh, a lot uh, of what you were sitting for the talk uh, because uh, I've been working um, or from a professional point of view. I have a, a law degree, but since 2013, I started, uh, uh, co-founded a company that is called a Social Enterprise, Impact Enterprise, Fashion Brand, and has a lot of classifications. And during a long time, I was not very aware uh, of what I was doing and every day struggling with the classifications. Um, and during this week, I had several meetings with a, a fashion agency company, with um, researchers from an economic field, uh, with uh, impact assessment experts. And uh, all of them have different perspectives and approaches to what we are doing that for me it's exactly the the same thing so i felt that some uh, or this transition or this time that we are living um 
uh, it's accelerating uh, the growth and, and the birth of different ways of approaching reality, either in our personal lives, either in business. And But we keep uh, being pushed forward to put it in boxes and sometimes to use the same KPIs that that exists for the, the classifications and and does not fit and it's quite difficult. And at the same time, what I understood and I, I, I truly felt is that well we 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 kept going due to the partnerships and relationships that we have been building and that we redesign every day. <laughs> And they are truly, uh, or those that are consistent and that we keep today since the beginning, are those that are built under trust and something that I think it's beyond empathy because um, every day uh, we have to uh, understand the perspectives of others, our partners, our employees, our beneficiaries, the government, consumers, and at the same time, also understand understand what is the root of their needs, uh, and to think uh, or to 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 put everyone uh, looking in the same direction at some point or feeling the same way. And I'm really sorry I cannot translate my feelings or my thought in. Um, perhaps a clear way. Uh, uh, English is not my first language and I don't speak English often. But as I was, I didn't prepare, I didn't took too much time to, to check on the theme of the conversation. But when I was hearing you, it's like you were translating what I felt this week. <laughs> so I will pass my avocado <laughs> to George. I'll take it as a glass. Thank you, Elena. That uh, that's really really good to to hear um, how you have taken your one kind of component and transformed it into something completely different in the last seven eight years of use this new fashion, social innovation, entrepreneurial space. So I think that sounds. And, and from what Kyra has, has said about this, I really actually am finding it fascinating to hear about this because in a similar way, it's very much what we, my colleagues and I and a good friend of mine and I are working in a similar way on creative, creative social entrepreneurial kind of teaching and learning in different places and um, uh, Kyra, I may ask you to put up the little um, equation again because I think you have that's, that is the first time I have found anyone who has been able to synthesize the idea of of um, emergence and complexity into kind of such a an amazing very simple perspective and yes it's almost like an equation but at the same time it, it, the variables are so intense and amazing that they're they're all working together to kind of, you know, kind of bring out what is, you know, well, how do we, how do we work together really in these kind of broader perspectives? So, um, it, like I said, I've been, for the last year, I've been working with a colleague of mine outside of my own kind of normal, in quotes, normal work and looking at how social innovation, entrepreneurship, which I have nothing, I'm not anywhere connected to that but somehow have found myself now some teaching it and, and engaging in design innovation perspectives and, and all of this. And it's been really fascinating to learn about how these different things all come together, as well as putting into perspective my own design. I'm, a, I'm an architect by training. That's what I study, but I don't, almost like yourself, I went from one very professional realm into 
something completely different. <laughs> and I think that this notion of, of emergence is, is that. I think it really is important to, to understand that, that idea of, of connecting to others, learning to empathize with them, and I like your notion of beyond empathy, you know, going beyond even just the basic understanding of what someone is doing, you know, because, for example, I teach my students to go from being sympathetic to being empathetic. But then is there a space even after that? And perhaps that's where you can you can begin to work with others. You can begin to to en enable transcend those those communication boundaries that we tend to find ourselves either with our own partners or with people who we work or even with my own students and and i think all of that is really important skill i guess uh, and, and 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 it's something that we've been trying to teach the students i'm a, a lecturer at the moment and and so it's like how do you teach that you know, or is it something that can even be taught this notion of, of emergence and complexity, or do you just have to learn how to deal with it in an organic way? And, and that's it. Because we were also talking in a very connected way to the idea of resilience. And so can you teach resilience or do you have to teach the idea of preparedness and understanding and, and empathy to be, to be resilient? And is that kind of the way and the approach to it? So um, I think there's a lot, there's a lot that even just this, this, I, even when you did your singing bells, are those, uh, are those Tibetan ones, uh, Kyra? Yeah. Um, I love, I love the idea of overtones and undertones, especially because um, I used to be in, in choral singing a lot. And for me, we all knew if we were all listening, we all knew we were in tune when all of a sudden, all of our voices more or less merged and we could all then hear an overtone. And that's when we knew we're in sync, we're all singing the right tone and, and we can move forward. At the same time, you know, when you have dissonant sounds and if it's on purpose, that's the whole point, you know, then you have this, this other space of, of, of tension. And I guess that's kind of making where you are moving between kind of spaces of dissonance and spaces of consonance and kind of transitioning between those and moving forward, I guess, could not, you know, be this idea of, of emergence. I don't know if any of that is making sense, but, uh, but it, it's, it, I think it's been really uh, fascinating to hear and how weirdly this notion of emergence and, and complexity and the trust in the group has been, um, very much a part of what I've been doing right now. And it's just funny that I've landed in this, in this, in this group for today to talk, to, to speak with everybody uh, here. Uh, so I'll, I'll stop there because also I want to, if you can put up your, the little uh, uh, formula again, uh, I, I, if I can write it down, that'd be, that would be really, really good. So I'll pass, I'll pass my glass to the middle, uh, back to, to whoever wants to, to speak or engage. Or Kyra. <laughs> yeah. I'll pick it up. I'm happy to hold it up, or I can try and try and type it into the chat too. But just uh, figuring out where to hold it so that the light works. There. And again, I, to give credit, I, I learned that. That's something that came to me through my mentor, Jane Lorand, which came to her through Julian Still uh, from Belgium. So it's, it's it's getting passed around. You know, I, I, one of the things I, I, am, I love about um, math and physics is I think about it like the invisible infrastructure of all things. And so when there's these ways that it kind of rises up, you know, that the emergence of that equation is like, in a way there's, you give credit, right? Oh, I learned it from this person. Where there's like this lineage and um, kind of humility and grace in that. And then there's also 
it doesn't really belong to anyone in that quality of emergence. Like it, it, it did it, that equation emerged. No part of the system owns it. Um, so it, it, again, it's like, it reflects that same, that same quality that we were starting with. I love the, the word that you brought in, George, resilience. It's another, has a wonderful etymology. Like re is again, and salio means to leap. So resilience is to leap again. It's like that quality of like, okay, can we move forward even in the face of whatever challenge or in, in response, like how, what gets, what leaps forward or is brought forth in us when, when, we, when we are challenged. Um, I don't know if either of you have ever watched, you know, everybody's got their different cultural media backgrounds, but there's a thing in the US with these, well, you had some childhood there, but like the old bad, like 1980s Kung Fu movies where like, you know, I feel like sometimes my response to challenge is kind of like, oh, you know, it's that. But my my inner, I have this inner archetype of like one of those kung fu dudes. Because when the challenge comes in, they they all get excited. Like, oh, it would be my honor, you know, to kill you. And I try and like wake that up. Like, okay, what is this gonna? What does this? What skill or what capacity can this call forth in me that I maybe wouldn't have engaged with um, if I if I wasn't meeting it. Um, so I, I love that concept and work a lot with it of resilience. And um, as a musician, I actually just learned a song recently on uh, guitar and to sing uh, by these uh, two sisters here from the Appalachians, uh, Leah and Chloe. And they have a band called uh, Rising Appalachia. And they have a song called Resilience. And I heard it a couple months ago and decided to learn it really to to kind of get the feel of it. Okay, you know, okay, how can I, can I really carry that? So thank you for bringing that, that word to the, the circle and that question of, um, can you, is this something that you can, you know, can you teach? How do you, or, or more, how do you teach? Like, can you lecture about empathy or complexity or navigating this or, how do you build experiential work or how, you know, how, how to design for that, how to design for that quality of experience that, um, you know, or do we all just stumble through it? Like Elena, you were speaking about your kind of process and meeting different people. And then almost from the different perspectives they were bringing, having, you know, deepening your own understanding and also, that I really heard that quality of when one is carrying or, you know, birthing or growing something new into existence, but some people are trying to put it into a box that, that it doesn't fit into. That's from actually like a previous way of being previous, whether that's a previous way of economically being or a previous way of socially being. And, um, I get the, how how do we both imagine and articulate our way forward kind of into the world that we have a desire to live in? It's like your your initiative or the the you know your business venture, it feels like it's it's trying to bridge into something that 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 doesn't maybe have a language or a box yet. And um, that's courageous and challenging and um yeah i'd like to hear more about that like how that's been for you and um yeah that i, I just really heard heard that piece of like well okay i can i can label it this and then it'll fit into kind of all these predetermined systems and but it, it actually isn't really that and i'm not even really sure i i have it want to be in those systems I kind of because part of what I'm doing is trying to transcend those systems and create a different pathway so I was curious about that uh, well uh, the word that comes to my head it's confusion <laughs> um, but uh, 
Well, I never had a, I, I didn't start it or um, emerge myself uh, in what I'm doing today because I had a goal or a passion or anything. It, it just happened, uh, it just happened that I went, I, I, I always love to study other topics than law. <laughs> and I applied for a post graduation that uh, mm -hmm. I just uh, choose because it it would start after I would go on holidays, and um, I, I, it was kind of a game that worked for me as a way of uh, exploring uh, skills and uh, to acknowledge things that I could mm -hmm. not do in my professional life because I work in an insurance company. So I think I was really unprepared for what uh, start to become my journey or my business. And um, I, I feel that somehow I, I keep uh, unprepared because of course we can master a lot of skills and we can study to uh, go deep on some topics that can help us to manage a business to communicate better to be an effective leader but at some point and I thought that resilience was a word that uh, well, I hear often and I hear often in, especially in an entrepreneurial, uh, uh, mindset about resilience. And, um, I only understood later that resilience has nothing to do with, uh, strategy or being, uh, able to respond and quick adjusting and being disruptive and, and being competitive is something in your heart. It's, ca it's kind of a, a, a calm and, a, um, strange patience <laughs> that, uh, somehow helps you to, uh, have clarity that it's not about you or your skills or the achievements or the goals. It's something that uh, maybe <laughs> you have to serve <laughs> with your skills uh, or uh, somehow your skills uh, can, skills or motivation or, or passion, we, 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 we tend to separate all of that, but we are human beings, not human doings. So, it's you as person <laughs> uh, that probably have some qualities, characteristics, or are or are in a context that somehow can serve something uh, like a tool <laughs> for something that is bigger. And I'm I'm not speaking about pur purpose or or uh, I'm not trying to make this special because uh, it's not my purpose of life being always. Uh, struggling and being triggered <laughs> with challenges. I don't think that, and it's not my purpose of life to have a business or a fashion business or a social inclusion business. That's not the thing, but somehow I accepted that um, it's resilience is just to be okay and accept that um, I will fail. I don't have all the, the, the answers and what I can do best is just to be honest, uh, with what I'm doing and, um, somehow, uh, to, uh, engage people with the same vision for a goal that is common. Um, and I don't know if this makes any sense. <laughs> But that was the, the, the way that I, I found to preserve myself, um, somehow, uh, and because, uh, we all want to, I think most part of the human beings know what is right and what is wrong or, and yes, we tend to put things into boxes, what is right and what is wrong. And uh, I, I felt by working with different people from different ages, different backgrounds, that when we create a, a safe space where people do not feel influenced 
for what they what usually makes them feel uh, afraid or not enough they open and it's quite easy to build trust and to redesign all the relationships uh, and to sum the best of each person and create uh, a really nice sum <laughs> of these relationships but this takes a lot of time and it's quite difficult to do it in in a very in 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 the way we live today that is very competitive uh that it's 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 very quick everything needs to be fast everything needs to be disrupted everything needs to be efficient uh, <laughs> we should use platforms and uh, to optimize all the processes to be faster better uh, it's like it's mandatory that there are winners <laughs> and uh, losers and uh, i think this is uh the the main problem for me at the moment because somehow uh and i i i, I i've been working with some uh social business schools and also do doing some mentoring or sometimes uh, people invite me to be a uh, jury member for pitching uh and the words use it are always uh very competitive and is a mindset that we are the best doing what we are doing and uh, we need to fight climate change <laughs> and, and uh, I think that this um, does not help to build that resilience that or at least what I feel that is resilience um, and I'm sorry I cannot make this more clear in English, but <laughs> but this is how I, I I've been feeling and um, managing um, uh, me, Elena, <laughs> put it <laughs> in a context that I need to be a lot of things and I just want to be Elena. <laughs> And I will pass my avocado because I spoke a lot. Okay. Hey, Elena, that's great. I think there's a lot there uh, that I can um, relate to similarly because in in the area I I teach design and design innovation to to university students and and it's a very it, it is all about these terms of disruption and efficiency and process and this and, and, and how to be innovative and lots of people put equate innovation to technology you know, and and we tend to think the more innovative technology is it's faster more efficient more this and therefore you go back to innovation therefore to be innovative you need to have all of these things and so um i've I've tried to say, well, actually, hold on. There's other ways of thinking about innovation from more than just the technological uh, aspects of it. You know, through the social, through the um, cultural kind of creation and 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 collaboration. I, I tend to sometimes use a, an example from. Uh, so I love history, and I love to use kind of historical examples where. Lots of times people will say something innovative is something, oh, oh, I invented this thing. It's like, have you, have you looked through the last five, seven, eight millennia of human history to, to, to consider that your idea is truly uh, this, this thing or has there, have there been other ways of engaging with that? Um, I always like to use the example of um, Cordova in like the 10th century where you had all these mixtures of people in this kind of space in, in central Spain or southern Spain and Andalusia, all kind of coming together and, and, and a fruitful convergence of, of ideas. And I think they they kind of knew this idea this notion of innovation through through this much more organic, non non kind of technologically kind of uh, perspective. And I have a feeling that 
I'd always love to go back to that time, to that period of time, which I know has a very different perspective and has also kind of its bad periods as well. But I think it would be really amazing to go there to kind of see how how people of different faiths, of different perspectives, of just everything, all kind of merging and and living together, and not just together because they happen to all be next to each other, but actively engaging in, in dialogue, in conversation, in in becoming more than just the sum of their parts, um, which again, takes me back to that, to your lovely um, <laughs> um, function, uh, formula, you know, how do we, how do we become more than just the sum of our parts? And how do we get away from being put into our little boxes? Um, because similarly, like, like yourself, Elena, I too try to get away from being put into a box, particularly with my students as well, where they, they tend to want to be a certain thing. And it's like, well, actually, you 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 should well it would be good for you to to think about yourself in the broader context of things and not just i am this fashion designer i teach in a textiles and fashion school so so weirdly we're in the in this world quite weirdly connected in there um so they they very much see fashion and textiles and that's it and obviously they connect to the broader issues around the world but they 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 have a for some reason the way that they perceive themselves is that I am this and and nothing else and you go well hold on this way of doing it may not be the most effective when it comes to when something does happen or there is a pandemic and you can't be a fashion designer and and people and you need to say listen to others to, to work with them and 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 determine what are new kind of perspectives. And I think, again, that notion of being adaptable, being resilient um, is key. And I like the idea, I like your notion of that it doesn't need to be fast. It doesn't need to be, you know, you can, you can kind of work with others in a slow, meaningful way that, yes, it takes time, but, but I think those tend to be the most uh, the most uh, kind of important ways of understanding and kind of, I guess empathizing. And and I don't remember if it was you, Helena, or Kyra who said transcending the systems. I found I just wrote it down. I was like, that's a really that's a really lovely way of thinking about that. You know, even again, we're going beyond just what we're currently thinking about as systems all are all working together actually how do we even transcend those systems how do we how do we kind of move into broader uh well, so what's a word that could be used assemblage so there's a term from back a french term called assemblage that kind of means these connecting rhizomes of different pieces all kind of mixing together and so maybe that's something to 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 explore or bring up down the line as we as we look towards kind of in you know these the human being component i also like your thought about human beings not human doings <laughs> so um i'm going to be using some of these thoughts down the line because i'm just finding them really fascinating and and really kind of engaging uh to kind of think about um as as just kind of context of of listening and working together and i was just also looking at the at our kind of bit about trusting the group so uh, i'm going to shift a little bit uh, because i've been so i've been i i do a lot of group teaching group working group well like all of us we all work together even if we're in the middle of nowhere or we're up by ourselves in our offices or our homes we're constantly engaging with others and with my students particularly, we're, we're, they always have, they hate group work, group work, they hate it. Absolutely hate working in groups. And it's like, why do we have to do this? Why do I have to, and you know, my group isn't working well, or this person isn't working well. And, and it's been something that I want to kind of look at further. It, it's actually something I'm like, what, how do I study this? You know, kind of makes me want to go and do like a master's or something in, specifically in this idea of 
in, in merging trust within a group. And I know those take time, but how, you know, how do you also do that, say, in a, in a system like a school? And sorry if I keep bringing it back to, to these examples of, of, the, of my, my university. It's just that all of these things are so important and I want to be like, how do I take this and share it with, with all of my students? And like, I know that next week I am going to be sharing a lot of this. <laughs> like, I just had the coolest conversation with two other people from around the world. Um, but um, I think it's really important to, to share that these ideas that we're even discussing uh, with others. So I'm uh, maybe didn't talk as much as, as Elena, but I'm, I'm posing more questions out there with with my glass uh, to to the other two uh, to to just think about as well or or ideas that may be brought about with this notion of trusting the group or trusting each other or trusting that things will happen. And if something and when it doesn't happen, how do you regain the trust or do you trust easily i don't know and you know I, I know that there's always those silly things of you know uh, trust freely or whatever it is is it trust freely but remember constant i don't you know or forget you know, your, what something has happened but you know but don't trust them again i i don't know how i'm terrible at those sayings but um uh, you know do you follow those types of sayings or do we make new sayings out of that too Anyways, I think I've now confused the group even further, but I'll pa pass it on. <laughs> I'm going to pick it up. I'm going to actually be, going to be brief and slightly disruptive, which is going to reverse the circle. <laughs> so let's see. It's just some, some kind of uh, emergent themes that I like to kind of pull out and weave in. One, I love this transition of human doing to human being, and I'm going to take it another one because the work that I'm doing around human becoming. So what if we're not even just a human being, we're a human becoming? Because uh, even the being has like kind of staticness to it. Like, this is what I am. Um, but uh, the core concept of becoming, I love uh, in a lot of ways because it has that sense, has several meanings. Becoming means kind of moving forward into right what we're what we're becoming what we're changing into what we're transforming into becoming in english also means attractive like that dress is very becoming on you so it has um an element of beauty to it um and i've been studying there's a physicist with a frank uh out of mit and his whole theory is that he's like a physicist very high level math and science thinker but his premise is that if something's true, it's beautiful. Like it's literally beautiful. So I'm reading his book. Uh, I think it's called A Question of Beauty and listen to him speak um, a couple of weeks ago. So the idea of becoming as also as beauty. And then there's a third meaning of becoming like as in it fits well, like it, it has a, it functions well. Um, so being, being, being human becomings, <laughs> I'm working on that. So that was one thread I wanted to pull out. And then let's see, I was thinking about the similarities or differences. Oh, it was between emergence, uh, emergence and innovation. Um, are those related? Do they, are they, are they the same? Or do they share properties? Um, I think my two of my main metaphors that I work with a lot personally are basically music, the world of music, as I shared at the beginning. And um, I also uh, am a kind of gardener permaculture person. So the garden and nature and, and especially kind of the garden, both metaphorically and literally is somewhere I go to often to work things out. Um, so I was thinking about innovation. How, how does nature innovate? And it's certainly very different from the kind of the technology speed, um, yet extremely effective, like pretty much everything <laughs> that we depend on in terms of natural systems is through nature's innovations. So very, very, very effective innovation, but that doesn't necessarily share a lot of the qualities that we're currently thinking about as innovative, right? What you were speaking to. So those were a few threads or seeds or pieces I wanted to put my 
highlighter on and share back into. So I'm going to pass it, but uh, I kind of like the idea of reversing that. We're going to go, you know, I, I don't know. For me, it would be counterclockwise. I'm not sure what direction I show up on your screens. <laughs> That's that's fine because I I had a I had a bit of a uh, of think thoughts about this so I really like this notion of you know what is the difference between emergence and innovation you know how does nature innovate in particular because you know at one on one side I, when I were I was a park ranger actually before any of this I, in California weirdly um, and um, there was. I, I became, I befriended the park, one of the park's geologists, and he had a sticker that said, nature bats last. And, and basically saying that, that, and I said, what does that mean? And I'm like, because my baseball analogies were very <laughs> terrible. <laughs> so, so I thought, what is it, nature bats last? Like, well, in the end, nature will always win, no matter, you know, yes, we're, Human beings are part of nature, the natural system, and therefore, whatever the natural system kind of functions, even if we in quotes destroy the earth, it will find a way to kind of pers pers you know progress into something else, and we will die with it, or or you know, or maybe we go off and find another planet or whatever. But uh, but he says that in, and that's what he always meant that in the end, nature will always have the last word of of whatever is said, whatever we think. And so it can be very cutthroat. It can be very dramatic. It can be incredibly, um, you know, uh, harsh. A, a natural system, you know, to kind of divide things or or say these whole systems will will perish for the development of other things. But at the same time, the, the things that survive, the things that the, the various systems uh, that that are symbiotic to each other are also then really lovely to explore. And I think that's where we tend to somehow, um, we tend to forget that that's, that's also part of this, this kind of the innovation of, of nature and, and the kind of the non-technological, the non-Black uh, Mirror, if you meet, if you know the, the show Black Mirror. Um, I use Black Mirror in a lot of my, my examples uh, when I speak to my students. Um, so I, I think, I think the, the, the idea of emergence and innovation, uh, I think emergence for me feels very much like, like something that uh, flourishes in a uh, like um, almost cyclical, seasonal, that kind of can, can blossoms into things and then maybe it comes down, you know, it maybe dies and perishes, but then leaves something behind to then become like you're becoming to become something else, um, and I feel sometimes innovation tends to almost be these blocks that we kind of are, are adding. And I know that it, it it isn't, and I know that how do you how do you bring this notion of emergence and innovation together into something that can be that can be fruitful? How do we begin to allow ourselves to emerge more? I guess you know to to give ourselves the time to 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 flourish um, in various systems and maybe even become other things and maybe maybe that's that trust component again I think is important of trusting that maybe things aren't happening as quick as maybe we may want it to be but that's okay and, and it's okay to kind of allow things to become something else and maybe even in our heads our plan of which is why whenever I'm in as a designer and as an architect, I'm always like, well, I can make all the plans in the world, but in the end of the day, <laughs> something can come in and totally disrupt that plan. And I just have to now work with it. And, and I know that I can get quite stuck and I'll get quite frustrated for about 20 minutes when something doesn't, isn't going my way. And then I'll be like, okay, how do we, you know, how do we move forward? And I, I have to learn to, shift a little bit more a little bit faster maybe in my own maybe or maybe not maybe it's okay to kind of live in that frustration for a little bit but um i think it's important to to, to think about in that uh, not think, seeing these two as emergence and innovation as separate but but maybe bridging them together through trust through 
through this idea of becoming. Uh, I'm definitely going to check out this Frank Wilczek uh, uh, physicist. Weirdly enough, I know a physicist or former physicist turned strategic. Uh, he's he's like um, a professor at the Adam Smith College of Economics here at Glasgow University. And he was originally a physicist and through and through. And so he's somehow taken his notions of, of physics and kind of, um, you know, the, these complex these complex systems that exist in nature and has become to apply them in, in strategy and, and in kind of almost thinking of it as like quantum economics type of type of stuff. And it's really, really fascinating to, to hear him speak uh, about that as well. But I think I think there's something there. Um, before I pass it on again, uh, between this notions of emergence innovation that can be brought together, um, especially this notion of human becoming, um, that maybe it is always in this state of becoming. I think I think we are, for me anyways, we are, if it's good to be in the state of becoming and sometimes you become something else for a little while and then it moves into something else. And I think this idea of a static period is something that is almost imposed on us or, or something that uh, either social, cultural or government or political kind of processes want us to stick in one spot or want us to be in you know, one, one thing. Uh, either because it's easier to count us, it's easier to manage people who don't move around. I know that historically, all nomadic cultures, once they were kind of controlled by a kind of a governing body, were made to stop moving around because they're easier to count, they were easier to manage, they were easier to tax, you know, rather than these people who just kind of are constantly uh, moving uh, through different spaces. So I think I think it's really lovely to hear to hear that notion of of uh, becoming uh, in in many other spaces so with that i'll i'll pass it to to elena uh, apparently we have 10 minutes left oh my god we have 10 minutes left <laughs> well i was listening you both and there are some words that pop in my head and one is um interconnected <laughs> Uh, other is evolution and the other is balance. And what I feel is like nature, uh, we are always or will always find balance and um, we will always live in that process that is always emerging. And innovation is just the way we redesign the interconnection between <laughs> between all the relationships and everything around um, and that's how we make our evolution and I, I don't know if this seems too holistic but what I feel is like in nature uh, there is a disaster to uh, allow a rebirth um, and somehow that's how the, the planet that has her own intelligence and her own agenda <laughs> works. And uh, that is a pattern that we see every day becoming and emerging uh, in order to create order. Sorry, I'm being redundant, but what I, what I mean by this is that uh, we are all always looking for some balance and for some peace somehow. And I will pass to Kyra because <laughs> we need to wrap up. All right, I, I, I wrote down a living system is always in a state of becoming. <laughs> That's my new mantra. I was thinking about um, I also like the concept of leverage points, like kind of where where I put my energy or intent or time, and like what is you know is that is that 
Because there's times I can push really hard on somewhere that's not a good leverage point and it's not going to move at all. And then I can push not that hard over here on something that is an effective leverage point and it can move a lot. So understanding leverage points, I was thinking about that in relationship to what we're calling innovation or what we're exploring as innovation. Because I mean, with both of you in fashion design, I, like I can think about, okay, there's innovating there's innovating what I do, what I make. Okay, I've made this like this this dress that looks totally different than any other dress that's ever been, or this shoe that looks totally different. So I've changed what I make. But then there's this leverage point of like, well, I could change how I make it. Like I'm making the this dress out of like, you know, leaves, or I'm making it out of this new silkworm thing, or I'm making it out of recycled, you know, leftover plastic bottles. Or like, there's how how I make. There's what the thing is kind of its look and its feel, and that could be an innovation. There's an innovation in how it's made. And then there's this even further back and that's like, well, why? Like the, wh why, why, like, why are we wearing clothes? Or what's, what's kind of, what's the point? What are the underlying values and ethics and whys of, and I'm just using fashion as an example, but it's true, like everything, any one, any object, any anything that has a tangible that we can see, has a what and a how and a why that's like embedded in it. So I'm really been, I'm liking this conversation and how it's giving me a place to think about innovation as these different, like the, where, where am I putting the leverage point? Cause I could change like, you know, the color of a dress a million times, but it's not necessarily going to shift something profound in like something that's more deeply aligned with my values back here in that deeper space. Um, so that was one piece. And then this question that we've kind of circled around and touched a couple of times around trust. And if it is so essential in terms of our capacity in whatever system we're in, our family system, our friend system, our intimate system, our classroom, our business collaborations, um, how how you know how do we build trust and how do we become trustworthy ourselves so there's this kind of like that for me a lot the the what one of my teachers calls the inner front line like what what am i doing like where am i going to take accountability or have humility um and improve kind of my skills and that i love that uh Elena, that piece you spoke to, like resilience isn't this kind of like applied skill, like, oh, I'm going to jump, I'm going to do this, I can do this really fast. It's more like a quality of being that's in my heart of like how I allow what's happening and, and experience, like how I allow it in and respond to it from, from that depth of presence. Um, and how that builds, like that allows me to build trust with myself and with other, other beings. Um, and a little side note of like the, the work I've been doing with Jane Lorand that um, we have been developing these kind of short online labs. And one of the ones is around like building trust and intellectual humility. So George, if you were interested in that, that's something I can follow up with and say like, hey, just go and look at these presentations and they're set up with experiential exercises. So there's like a short lecture piece and you too, yeah, and so I'll get that to you, both of you. And um, there's a short lecture piece and then there's experiential work where you explore it. So just to answer some of those questions and probably will create more questions than it answers, which is <laughs> part of the human becoming process. Um, yeah, I, I'd love to share that with, with you too. And, uh, we're, we're just starting to kind of move that out as an offering into the world, but it does address several of the things that we've touched on in our dialogue. And I see it's 1042, so I'd love to have each of you just kind of have a, a minute or so, minute or two, and then I'd like to close with a sound again. So I'm gonna pass it. I'll take it. Um... This has been really lovely. I, you know, I, my my friend and colleague Joe uh, sent me this link, and I thought, well, you know, what is this? And I'm really ex glad that I took part, and I hopefully we take part in more of these. And I I look forward to seeing more of your the the work that you're doing, Kyra, and as well as with Helena. And I think what's really important is this idea of listening, 
in, in becoming better listeners to, uh, as well as um, thinking through this space of, of a quality from within that we trust not only the others, but we trust ourselves to kind of become hopefully better people. So I'm, I'm excited to see what all of this becomes as well. So uh, hopefully we get to engage each other again uh, in the future, uh, whenever that may be. Well, I think I will just thank you for this moment. Um, I think uh, this uh, way of communicating and these dialogues help us to build the trust in the group because uh, we are here sharing our thoughts without an expectation, without, um, without putting um, or, or leaving out our boxes uh, in an open way. Uh, and this also helps uh, building trust, um, not only within ourselves, but with every human becoming <laughs> that is willing to to participate so thank you for this moment um it's the second time that i participate uh, because a friend of mine nominated as a, a, a participant so it's quite random but uh it's always a mindful moment where i have a lot of insights and um i feel connected <laughs> to people that probably uh well maybe i can get in touch later but probably i will never see in a very deep way so thank you